Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. This is IBM Edge, this is theCUBE. We're here with Dr. Stephen Pratt. He's the CTO of CenterPoint Energy, a Houston-based uh, company. Steve, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thank you very much. So tell us about CenterPoint. Well, CenterPoint's a 135-year-old energy delivery company. We deliver natural gas to about three and a half million customers. We deliver electricity to 2.3 million customers in the city of Houston. We operate in six states. Um, we are one of the leading innovators in terms of smart grid as well as smart meters. Uh, we have implementations of both advanced distribution management systems and advanced metering systems that actually drive uh, benefits to our customers, uh, both on the electric and gas side. Okay, so, uh, so you, but you generate the power as well or you're primarily just distributing? We are a wires and pipe company. Uh, we do neither generation nor do we do retail for electric. We do do retail to our gas customers. Okay, so you don't have the, the typical giant capital expense of a utility company. You're really you know, getting the, 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 the electricity, the energy source to the consumer. Not the retail consumer, but the... That's correct. We like to think of ourselves as an infrastructure company that moves energy from point A to point B. Um, we, in the state of Texas, we went through deregulation and we looked at keeping our generation, which we did have at one point in time. We looked at maintaining our retail, which we did have at one point in time, but decided that we'd uh, be in the business that we believe we do best. And so we have become a wires and pipe company uh, in, in terms of moving energy from point A to point B. So yeah, deregulation creates competition, opens the market for you know, uh, uh, folks like yourselves to change their business model and, and compete with others. Uh, you've got oil prices, you know, going up, down, <laughs> and then sort of st steadying. You got the whole fracking thing. Mm -hmm. How does all that affect you from a technology infrastructure standpoint? Well, oil prices certainly has a, uh, have an impact on any company that delivers energy in, in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, we have to purchase what it is that gets generated and that runs through our pipes and our wires, and so ultimately that does have an impact. But for a public utility, you're uh, somewhat shielded from some of that. It's your public utility commissions that typically make decisions on uh, your return on your investments. So I would say that uh, we're riding that storm and we're probably better off than most companies in that case. But from an infrastructure perspective and what we have to have in place is methods to maintain our infrastructure in the most highly resilient way possible. That means that we have to have devices in the field that can indicate the state of our grid at any point in time. We need devices in the field that can indicate whether our customers are having power problems or whether an outage or a potential outage occurs. And so we have to build infrastructure that pulls in data from intelligent devices, analyzes the data from those intelligent devices, and then makes decisions or suggests decisions on how to best deal with any type of event that occurs uh, within our systems. Yeah, so it's interesting. You, you hear lots of discussion about the Internet of Things and sensors and everything. Mm -hmm. You're a hundred plus year old company uh, that has had you know, so many endpoints. You know, how, how's technology really transforming uh, the, the way you, you run your business? So for 120 of those 135 years, we pretty much did business the same way. Um, when meters and advanced meters or smart meters and intelligent grid devices came into play, we looked at that very carefully and determined that would be our innovation moving forward. That would be the additional benefit that we can provide to our customers. And we were already generating a great deal of data about our customers, but the ability to uh, ingest that data, the ability to analyze that data in near real time allows us to make much better decisions much faster. And we use a great deal of technology to do that. IBM power systems, for example, are a big part of what we do. We also use the Streams product, which serves as our real-time evaluation for our analytics uh, interrogation. So we are a real-time company now with respect to the technologies we deploy, and we can make better decisions faster as a result. 
So, so talk about the back end, right? It's Internet of Things. You guys are living it. Um, you mentioned power. You're a, a Z Systems user as well. Talk about your your data center infrastructure from a you know server and maybe even storage standpoint. What's it look like? Well, absolutely. Um, we have a lot of technology. Uh, our technology matrix contains 1,100 different pieces of technology. Many of uh, much of that technology is IBM technology. I'm going to start with our mainframe. Um, our electric company uh, distribution system is still maintained on our mainframe. It works very, very well for us. At this point in time, we do not intend to move away from the mainframe. However, for our distributed systems and for analytics and for data ingestion, we use power systems. We have over 120 power systems in place today. Uh, those power systems provide the horsepower that we need to analyze data in, in re real time and, and near real time. All of that needs to be managed. We use the inter IBM Enterprise Systems Management tools, a variety of them, to monitor these systems, to monitor our intelligent devices, all that data is brought in. We use a correlation engine to examine that data, and then ultimately we make decisions about events that are occurring in our system. So our data center is, is very systematic in terms of we tie our servers to our IBM storage, for example. That's another big play or big part of what we have to do. We have to use storage that is very responsive. But I would say of all the technology we have and all of the IBM technologies we have deployed, the most important aspect is the resiliency aspect. When you're dealing in real time, where you're dealing with distribution of electricity to your customers, you have to have resilient systems. You have to have a system and the technologies in place that allow you to be as highly available as you possibly can. And our power systems and our storage devices and our systems management software allow us to link those things together in a very efficient way and provide for the highest level of availability as we run these analytical scenarios. So as a CTO, you're obviously architecting for availability. So it sounds like that's the yeah. lead piece. There's a lot of other pressures. But, and you're using your, the mainframe Z system for the, you said the distribution system, so that's the high availability workhorse, and then you're collecting data from the endpoints, bringing that in and doing analytics. That's really the primary use case for the power system, is that correct? That's correct. Our CIS system is what's based on our mainframe for our electric customers, but we use our power systems to ingest data in near real time for our, from our intelligent meters and also from our intelligent grid devices. They come in through those power systems. There's an aggregation of data, but ultimately that data does reside back in our mainframe and gives us more information about our electric customers as well. We use all of these systems in a very integrated way. Um, they each serve their, uh, the specific purpose relative to us being a smart grid company. And so we think we've got our technology uh, distributed in such a way and utilized in such a way that we get maximum benefit based on the platform that we're on. So you talked a lot about resiliency. I'm, I'm wondering if you can address how security has changed now that you're letting automation and all this technology help with uh, yeah, how you service your clients. Well, the interesting thing about security is it's the thing we're not really allowed to talk about. Uh, certainly everybody is, is aware of the security opportunities no matter what business you're in, no matter what technology you have in place to, to deal with that. Um, Centerpoint Energy, because we do have critical infrastructure, we do have electric infrastructure and gas infrastructure, actually works with a variety of government entities in terms of ensuring that we are well positioned to ensure we have the highest level of deterrent if you will, relative to securing our systems, particularly given that smart devices are on a network, so they are subjected to any type of network vulnerability that may exist. Um, we have put a lot of defenses in place today at Centerpoint Energy. Um, obviously, uh, your goal around security is really to detect, to contain, and ultimately resolve. I don't think any company believes they're going to be in a position to deter any potential threat, but we think we have the right security capabilities in place across all our technologies, including our IBM technologies, to ensure that we're in the best position we can possibly be in with respect to ensuring that we're securing our data, 
but also ensuring that our customers' data is protected as well. And what about apps layer? So are you writing apps or using commercial off-the-shelf software on top of, of Linux? Uh, is it Unix? Yeah. Maybe talk about that. So one. we use primarily uh, AIX mm -hmm. or Unix on our power systems, obviously. On our Z system, we run basically a custom-built CICS application for our CIS system, for our electric systems. Um, we do use an ERP system uh, for the majority of our company's business today. It's an SAP system. Um, on the mainframe? On, uh, well, no, the no, main that's, on uh, that's on power. Um, we do use DB2 databases uh, almost uh, uh, predominantly uh, to support all of our applications today. Um, we do use uh, uh, IBM system management software, Tivoli, uh, for both our uh, monitoring and correlation of events. So um, our applications, we write applications across the board. We do have Java applications that run under Linux. Uh, we have a variety of Microsoft-based applications. We run a lot of off-the-shelf software. We do a lot of customization uh, of our software. Um, because we are in a deregulated market, we're required to have a market system. Uh, that market system does run on IBM power systems as well. Um, so our applications are, uh, I guess as in most large organizations, are a variety of applications. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, uh, you look at the kind of the personalization trend that's been going on, how do things like Nest, uh, mobile apps, uh, you know, users using the cloud affect your, your business? So on a cloud, from a cloud perspective, uh, public utilities are typically slow to adopt, <laughs> um, uh, particularly cloud, but in the state of Texas, and I have to assume it's uh, like this for other utilities, we also have a way that we have to look for recovery of capital that's very, very different. So investments in the cloud have to be very large scale when we go to the cloud. Um, and they have to be something that allows us to get some form of return on, on investment. So we don't have a large presence in the cloud today. From a mobile perspective, uh, we look more at our workforce uh, around uh, uh, mobile apps than we do our customers today. We provide mobile apps for our customers. These are generally small apps. They're generally customized apps. Uh, today, we don't have a large portfolio of mobile apps. Um, so I would say we're in our infancy relative to uh, mobility. We certainly know that we will be there. Um, we are also in our infancy with respect to the cloud. It'll have to be the right workload and the right catalyst uh, to move us in the cloud. We fully believe that ultimately we will be in the cloud in a much bigger way than we are today. Uh, IBM certainly has a good cloud and we've actually developed a strategy with IBM around cloud and ultimately we will grow that, uh, that cloud presence. So last question, we're running out of time, uh, Steve, but I'm curious as the CTO, what's exciting you these days? What are you working on? What's the future hold? Yeah. So the most exciting thing for me is that we have an entire organization that's gotten behind data as an asset for the first time in our company's history and we get a lot of data. We do 221 million meter reads a day, which creates about a terabyte of data every day that we're required to keep for three years. We can do nothing with that data or we can mine that data and use what we find from mining that data to the benefit of our customers. That is very exciting to me today. Great, uh, Dr. Stephen Pratt, data-driven CTO, uh, utility company, consistent, predictable, cash flow business, reliable availability. Thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, it was really a pleasure having you. Well, thank you, it's been my pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Las Vegas. IBM Edge 2015, we'll be right back. <laughs>